Hi everyone, welcome to the first episode of How Does It Work, a series where I look at visuals in games and see how they work and try to recreate them. In this video I'll be looking at The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker's Lights. The GameCube version of Wind Waker has these really nice point lights that look low poly in shape. When they overlap they get brighter and there is no fall off. They don't seem to work like normal point lights. And a quick look at Simon Trumpler's Hyrule Travel Guide tells us that the lights are done using something called the stencil buffer. Using the program RenderDoc we can have a look ourselves. Launching a game, in this case an emulator, through RenderDoc lets you capture render frames and step through them. Here you can see how this screen in the Forsaken Fortress gets built up. Halfway through you can see it renders a bunch of low poly spheres that don't seem to do anything. This is our stencil buffer light. Every light sphere gets rendered three times and then finally shows up on screen with a quad. Looking at the light spheres individually, we can see that they indeed write to the stencil buffer. So we know that we need to use that buffer to recreate these lights. So what is the stencil buffer? It's a data type that holds numbers from 0 to 255 per pixel on the screen. By default the stencil buffer is set to 0. You can think of it like writing the number 0 on every pixel on the screen. So it's a bit like this, only every pixel is the number 0. We can do stuff with the stencil buffer by adding a stencil block to shader code. Let's go over some examples to make things clearer. We make a new shader that will replace the zeros with a 1 for this sphere. We do this by adding the following code. If we look at this stencil block here, Ref is the number between 0 and 255 we are working with. Comp is the comparison function. By writing comp always it means we will look in all the numbers on the screen between 0 and 255. Pass tells the buffer what to do when we pass the comparison. Pass replace means that if we pass this comparison, which we always will, we replace the current value with our ref value of 1, where the sphere is drawn. The result of the shader pass will make the stencil buffer look like this, but at this point we are only writing to the stencil buffer to add the 1 where the sphere is. To see any effect we need another shader to read this number and react to it. So let's create another shader and another sphere with that shader on it. We only want this sphere to render where the stencil buffer is set to 1. So in the shader we will add another stencil block. And we only care about the one value, so that is the ref again. And this time we will compare if it's equal to 1. This material will now only show up where it's intersecting with the other sphere. For a different example, another comparison we can do is not equal, which will then invert the effect and check whether the value is not equal to 1. And now the sphere is only visible when it's not in front or inside the first sphere. You can keep layering this reading-writing effect. If we go back to the equal comparison in the red sphere shader, we can add a new pass line, pass increment wrap, which will increase the buffer from 1 to 2 when the stencil test is successful inside of the first sphere. So now in a third shader we can check against ref 2. And this blue sphere will now only render when intersecting with the red sphere, while that's intersecting with the first sphere. If we go back to our numbers image, with all three spheres it would look something like this. The red sphere can only render inside of the red 1 buffer. The red sphere then overrides the red 1 buffer to create the blue 2 buffer. And the blue sphere can then only render inside of the blue 2 buffer. So how do we use this to make the light? We need to think in three steps. We need a masking sphere that writes to the stencil buffer, only where it intersects with other meshes. We need to render the light when the camera is outside of the masking sphere. Then we need to render the light again for when the camera is inside of the masking sphere. First we make a mask just like before. The shader will set a 1 in the stencil buffer where the light mesh is rendered. 
and rev1 is greater than everything else. And everything else here is our empty zero stencil buffer. We do this by writing ref1, comparison greater and pass replace. It will look like a normal unlit sphere right now. So to only show where it intersects, we need to make sure that the depth test is inverted from how it normally renders, only showing where the mesh is behind something, a greater depth value using set test greater. And to avoid any set fighting, which is flickering, we set it to not write to the depth buffer with set write off and to render to the transparent queue. And now it looks like this. And you might be thinking, isn't this enough? Just set it to blend the color and we're done. But because we are rendering wherever there is something in front of the mesh, it will now show through walls, which is not how the light should work. So we need to do a few more steps. Because this is just a mask, we don't actually want this mesh to show up. Uh, to skip any drawing to the screen, add color mask zero. So the next step is to render the light when the camera is outside of this sphere. In the second shader, we render again, this time only where the buffer is set to one. The shader will only render inside of the masking sphere. And because this shader uses standard depth testing, it will be blocked by whatever is in front of it. We can now add a blend mode to make it look transparent. And again to prevent set fighting, turn off depth writing with set write off. But we now have a problem. If we have more than one light and mask set up, one will show up inside of the other. Because the first sphere is still adding one in the buffer, the second sphere will read it in the wrong place. To prevent this, after a render of this light pass, we set the buffer back to zero. We write the buffer back to zero regardless of if it fails or passes on the stencil test or depth test, so we have a clean slate to work with again. By default, back faces are called, so only the outside of the masking sphere is reset, and when we put the camera inside of the sphere, it is still set to stencil buffer 1. Now we can stack as many lights as we want. Just one more issue to tackle now. When we go inside of the masking sphere, the light disappears. This happens because of the back face calling that is on by default. But even when we turn the calling off, the light inside doesn't show up properly. Because the depth testing is set to only show the light that's in front of other objects. So even with both sides showing, the wall is still blocking the rendering of the light. So we need another pass. So the final part is rendering the light when the camera is inside of the sphere. The stencil buffer is still set to 1 inside of the sphere, so we can check against that in this final shader pass. This time, to get through the depth issue, we use Z-Test Greater again, so that the light renders whenever there is geometry in front of it. The only place it still has the 1 value in the stencil buffer is inside of the masking sphere, so that's where this shader will be visible. As long as the colors of both light shaders are the same, you will not notice the transition between the first and the second light pass. But if we do change the color, you can clearly see when we go inside of the masking sphere. And that's the whole explanation, and why you need to render the light sphere three times to get the effect. Compared to the Wind Waker version, we just did the drawing of the light in the spheres directly, instead of using a quad over the screen. But other than that, I think we got pretty close to the original. For the setup, check the link in the description. Here's the setup for the built-in renderer. Grab the shader file and create a material. Put the material on the mesh you want as a light. And adjust the HDR color. For URP, grab the two shader files, create a material for each, and drop both materials onto the mesh you want as a light. Make sure that the mask is first in the list. URP doesn't like multipass shaders, so I had to split it into two files. If you want more tutorials like this, check out my GitHub page 
that has links to all of my tutorials about all sorts of game dev topics. Finally, a huge thank you to my supporters on Patreon who make these tutorials possible. Thanks for watching, have fun and see you in the next one!